Listen to the roar. It's the 60th championship match between the neighbours. Limerick have won 37. Clare 20 with two draws. Match referee is Liam Gordon from County Galway. In his very first Munster hurling title, we wish him well. Limerick won the toss, playing from right to left. This is about pride. This is about bragging rights. Who's it going to be? Clare Limerick. Away we go. The 2023 Munster hurling final. Colin Malone sending it up to Limerick side of the field initially. The space. Ball dropped down into that full forward line. Aaron Galan getting his first touch. Nice turn. And that is nice. just to the wrong side of the pulse. Already as Keen Nolan and Rory Hayes are inside on Galan and Flanagan. About 60 yards of space in front of both of them. The normal cornerback in your club's eyes would be water and they see that. But those two men in there have to try to hold their own. Clear left off the hook slightly there. Long took out from Ever Quilligan. Shane O'Donnell going for it. Linesman says it's going to be a clear ball. Mark Rogers is coming across to take it. Scored uh, a sideline actually in that round robin championship match against Limerick. It was a little bit closer if I remember correctly. Cuts it in well, aiming for Peter Duggan. He gets a hand to it. Knocked away comes first Jim with Burns. Needs to turn it quickly out first Garrod Hegarty. Goes long. David Reedy chasing this. Staying with him is Paul Malone. Claire win the ball back into the center. Adam Hogan playing in his first Munster final. Won a hearty cup of course with that great win, St. Joseph's Tuller. Mark Rogers. The hits are already going in. Claire hoping to open their account. Shane O'Donnell has the overlap. Pass inside off. Beautiful Dermot Burns. Lovely interception. Kept his eye on the ball all the time. And he's there to sweep it up. Vacuum up any danger. Comes for his that 20 metre line. Sends it down the middle towards David Reedy. Dermot Ryan is with him. Nice ball. Good vision. Over for his Tom Morrissey. Is this the first score? The Limerick fans like it. Yep. They love it more. And the flag goes up to indicate the first score of the game. I do, and it was David Reedy was the out ball. So you flick on there from Burns. Great ambition from Clare Marty, it has to be said there. There was an easy point on, but they decided they were going for a goal. And fairs to Burns, he got the flick away. Two simple passes into that man's hands and steady and score now for Limerick. Interestingly as well, inside Tony Kelly and Duggan are gone inside as the, the two for Clare. Ever Quilligan going long again, aiming for Peter Duggan, doing a, a Limerick trick in it as such. Nicky Quaid. He's been aiming for the road Hegarty for many seasons. It's worked beautifully for them. Claire trying to do something similar with that long top down towards Peter Duggan. John Conlon is there. Has the time to compose himself. Send it out to the wing. Limerick attack. Good work by Kyle Hayes. Never wait for the ball. We're all caught it at under 12s and under 14s. Kyle Hayes learned that when he was a young boy in his parish. Go for it. That he did, and John Conlon is sitting back there now. So, the first 30 seconds or so is just them fighting their feet. You can see Kyle Hayes nipping in there. You really expect him to get that in his hand, but if Ernst Dimmer did really well to get back and get a flick on it. Rory Hayes from the same club as his manager, Brian Lohan, just down the road at Wolf Tones, Nashana, Shannon Airport. John Conlon. Aiming possibly for Tony Kelly, trying to scoop it up. Dan Morrissey is there, giving it out. First, Kyle Hayes. He pulls the brakes. Three of them are trying to stop him. In nips, William O'Donoghue. Plenty of Limerick options across that 45 metre line. The captain, Declan Hannon, is one of them. He drops it in long. It's two against two. It's the touch. Is the Limerick man being fouled? I think he is. And the referee agrees. It's a free end for Limerick. And Seamus Flanagan was clearly being held. He was just for the ball came in, the two of them had a great wrestling match there as well. But in fairness to um, Rory Hayes, Flanagan, once he gets a goal side of the ball like that, he's very, very hard to deal with. And nearly as a defender, you're saying, OK, you can have a point here and we'd all move on. One on one like that, if he got around and spun him, he was straight in at Ever Quilligan. Aaron Galan going to take this. Big day for the Galway official. Aaron Galan 
has scored 25 points in four games in the championship. This is a simple tap over for him. And the Munster and All-Ireland champions have settled well with two early scores. I have, and Tony Kelly has come out from inside the 21 of, of Limerick, out around the 45 now, or 65 of, of Limerick, just to try to get into the game. See David Reed, he's got a nice bit of possession there. Claire will be hoping Tony Kelly could do the same. John Conlon and Keane Nolan were making uh, themselves available for a short puck up, but again, they go long. Shane O'Donnell somehow managed to get it up into the hand. But for eight, has blown his whistle, and he's given a free to Clare. It's been a big feature of Shane O'Donnell coming out around the half-forward line in the last number of years is that his ambition to attack defenders there, see Burns and Casey, knowing that they got inside, Tony Kelly had actually broken the line. Aidan McCarthy. This is club hurling with Ina Kilnamona. It's club football with Kilmurray Arbrickett. He scored a goal at 23 points in the journey so far. He's been playing well after a horrific in injury at work. Taps that over the bar. Claire are up and running. Took five minutes, almost six minutes. But that will settle them, Vernon. Took out as a long one by Nicky Quaid. Breaking ball, picked up by Tom Morrissey. He's Kyle Hayes available. He's Darren Donovan available. Just bounced off his chest, being pursued by Malone into the centre. Barry Nash, sweet hurler, wing forward, corner back, down towards Seamus Flanagan. Limerick looking for a free, referee didn't even acknowledge it. Long ball inside towards Mark Rogers. One of its given with UL. Sideline ball went off his hurling. That sideline is going to be for Limerick. In fairness, the question before the game, Marty really around the ref, what's Liam Jordan going to do? He's, he's letting it play, he's letting it flow. He's letting them have contact with each other, as you saw there. Barry Nash going to take this. Won his first All-Star back in 2021. With a touch on by Graham Mulcahy. Great wrist work, just knocking it back. 24, Mulcahy, 26, David Reedy. 13, Aaron Gillard. Nice combination. 10 is Gerald Hegarty. He's on the 13 metre line. And that is just gone to the left and wide for Limerick's second wide of the match. I know it's early days, but the tension is palpable here at the Gaelic grounds. Long ball dropping in. The referee spotted the foul by the Limerick defence. Jersey pulling. Indicated. There it is. It's a free, it's a easy free to give away now. Yeah, it's on Duggan's left shoulder there. Once he got inside again there, Morrissey was just gave him that little bit of tug. In fairness to Liam Gordon, he spotted at that time. There'll be a bit of that off the ball, Marty. Obviously, today there will be pulling and dragging, and as much as the referee can advise in the back of his head, I think if Liam Gordon sees any of those, he will blow him. On the goal line, Nicky Quaid and his defensive line. On the 20-metre line inside the D, there you have it, Aidan McCarthy. Simple tap-over point for him. Sides level for the first time. Nicky Quaid again aiming for this man. Gerard Hegarty in the centre. William O'Donoghue. Under pressure from Ryan Taylor. Aimed at number 13, but he plays outfield normally. Working hard as Colin Malone. Taking the hits, laying it off, all fair and square. Good work by Claire, Ryan Taylor, and the Shane O'Donnell, heading towards the 45. Little chin to the right, then swings to the left, and that is over the bar. Great play, Shane O'Donnell. Hard work by Carl Malone, he did the grafting for him. But here rolls Shane O'Donnell, brilliant. It is a great work to take Will O'Donoghue off the ball, and expect him to break through a couple of tackles. Claire centre defence, stopped him, turned it over. The Shane O'Donnell jink got him the room. His puck out is a problem too for Clare. They've got him coming out this side and turned it. Clare finding their mojo. Jim Ryan scored the winner the last time round. He's going for this one, but it's just outside the post for Clare's first wide of the match. Nicky Quaid, 10 aiming for 
to Road Hegarty. Batting with David McInerney. Little chip up. Second time round does the trick. Has the support if needed, and he does. Of Adam Hogan. Let's back the shoulders. Breathes in the oxygen. Let's fly. Hits the slipper. Dropping in to first Nicky Quaid. Sending it down towards David Reedy. Unmarked momentarily. Back first Kyle Hayes. It's all go at the Gaelic grounds as we anticipated. John Conlon just couldn't reach it. He's there now. There's a collision. And the referee, I think, I can hardly hear, to be honest with you, but I think he acknowledges that was an accidental collision and he has blown his whistle. He was. It was accidentally. Both players had their eye on the ball. Obviously, Marty, in a game like this, they're not going, no one's going to stop. Two them looking at it there and just clashed into each other. Hopefully, John Conlon's all right. He looks the most shook of both parties. Just winded, I would expect. And we all remember when John Condon was unable to play against Kilkenny in the All-Ireland semi-final last year. It really upset the balance and the rhythm. And, and well, to be honest with you, Clare never recovered from losing their All-Star from 2018. Brian Lohan will be concerned about his centre-half back from Clan Lara. Full credit to Brian Lohan. He's really done in his four years a great job with this Clare hurling team. He has, and he sprinkled consistency across all they're doing. It's no accident they've been the, the ones that have been closest to Limerick over the last number of years. And the referee has actually given the free. He gave an indirect Clare. free, I think, because um, Clare would have had possession. So because of that, it's an indirect free now for the Quilligan out. Dropping on the edge of the day. Laura Peter Duggan. Great hands. They play handball down in Clooney, Quinn and Kit Kitchen. Needed that skill there. Giving it out for Ryan Taylor. Turning, making room. Uses the short grip. It looks like it's on its way. Oh, beautifully, beautifully judged. Ryan Taylor gets his first point in the Munster final. Look at this for skill. The wrist work, the balance. Uses the short grip so he couldn't be hooked. Ball comes down for Aaron Galar. Looking at the pulse. Normal service surely has resumed for Aaron Galar. Second point of the game. It has, and that space, 40 yards outside Galan or outside Flanagan. This time he makes hay with it. In fairness to, to Keith Noel, there's not much he can do. Just make sure it's just a point is all is conceded. He normally respect one of his wing backs to come back and cut him out. Target is. Paul Malone, line ball, going towards Clare this time. Peter Duggan, spent a little time in Australia a few years ago and was welcomed back, of course, to the fold when he arrived. Tony Kelly, going to take this. Two goals and 22 points. Eight of those from Fries and, of course, a penalty in the 65. This time he goes a little bit short, winning to take on, five passing. Dermot Burns heading towards the 20. Umpire going for the flag. Tony Kelly is up and running. Just and that is an ominous sign if it happened to be from Limerick. It is. He hadn't really been on the ball in the first 13 minutes or so. Then he chips a soft ball to, to Duggan. Dances down the sideline hits him with no mark. And it's the quality of him. Good hands, Aaron Galar. Keen Nolan struggling. This is Galan. Galan. Yeah, that's his superpower, Marty, to be honest with you. And the ball bounces like that. He goes to the hand, normally inside the forward, and wants to go to the hurley there. But Galan is such, makes him so dangerous if you're marking him. Once he gets that yard ahead, he goes with the hand, and it sticks more often than not. And interestingly, as well, as Tiernan Burns, who's taken the free from between the 45 and 65, normally he's from 100 yards out, obviously. Aaron Galan has decided that Jeremy will be the man, he's staying away from the freeze. These ones anyway. Getting a rub of the uh, towel, because I can assure you it's very warm here in Limerick on this beautiful June Sunday. Jeremy Burns. Hits it, but yeah. didn't quite connect. It's harder, Marty, when you hit freeze from 50 yards, 60 yards, you're used to hitting from 100. You don't know, do you lash him over the bar? He's trying to nurse that one over and just pull it left. Again, Aver Quilligan goes long. Takes a hand underneath it. Here comes Peter Duggan. Trying to knock it back. Stalemate. 
Nicely picked up by Carl Malone. Giving it back to Jim and Ryan. Oh, my word. What a score. He's been doing it all summer long. All the way from Crantlow, about four or five miles down the road. Yeah, some score. He missed one earlier, but it shows the form the man is in. Says I can still have a go. Back himself. Great score. His brother Connor, of course, was man of the match in the All Ireland final ten years ago. That's Connor Ryan. His younger brother is certainly following in his footsteps with a score like that. Yeah, Reedy did really well there on the on that puck out, Marty's, and went to the far side of the pitch. He watched him slowing down here. He can see Condon coming. Just pulls on the brakes. John Condon piles into the back of him. It's just that bit of cuteness, I suppose. He gave a little look over his right shoulder. Aaron Galan has come back to take this. Made his debut against Clare, actually, back in 2017. He's won a few All-Stars since. Just outside the 45, there you go. That's the angle. Never in any doubt. Third point of the match for the Patrick Swell Club man. Two-point game with all 16 minutes gone. Tony Kelly. Surrounded. No free. Clare Club are looking for it. Play on. Now the free is on Dermot Ryan. I think to be fair to referee, I think he was watching to see what would happen because he did put the pistol up to his lips. He did, and it's a, the way our game, I suppose, has gone is just in that in that 10 seconds there where it's body on body. You'd look like a shoulder hit on Kelly, play on, no free, and then it's just an arm over the shoulder that Tom Morris I think put in there, and it gives a free. Look, a little bit further out, a bigger challenge for Aidan McCarthy. Long way from the Limerick City goalposts. Too much of a challenge, just to the right and wide. Second wide of the match for the Banner County. They've come in their thousands, the people of Clare. Just down the road. Short ball, far as Barry Nash, David Reedy. John Conlon with it, Barry Nash on the return. South Liberty's man into the space. Good ball for a forward, but well won this time by Keen Nolan. He has the slither in the hand. Gives it to Malone. Trying to stay within the white lines. Gives it back for us. Keen Nolan. And Smith of Brian's Club in Killaloo. A club that produced the late great Axel Foley and Keith Woods and so many stars. Giving it long. Dropping it in towards Peter Duggan. Was he being held? The referee yes. concurs. It was dug and roll, Casey lovely there. Casey in fairness had to grab just above the togs to hold him back. There's the referee he spotted a great ball in. They know the matchup inside here is Duggan. Casey's gonna struggle. Casey's left hand there. He just had a little tug on Duggan's jersey. The yellow card as well. The last thing you need 17 minutes in. The yellow card for the corner back from the pier shake. Be disappointed to be shown a yellow card for that particular. Soft enough challenge yeah, to be think fair, so. Brendan. Yeah. It didn't strike me as a, a yellow card there. No, I didn't think so. If it was a goal scored and tried to be a black card, but look, it's a harsh enough one. Aidan McCarthy going for his third point. Confidence restored. Service, normal service restored. 18 and a half minutes gone. Clear the challengers, leading by three. Tom Morrissey waiting for the break, and it came his way. Graham Mulcahy surely held. The referee agrees, and that is a free for Limerick. Set puck out for Limerick as well, high attack of he breaks it down, and then Morrissey gets and gives it over here to Graham Mulcahy. In one way, friend and both teams are giving away soft enough freeze. I mean, Mike Casey's free, Dimmer Grind's free. Yeah, you're better off maybe coming with your body because the very main you room to hand in the main time but the referee seems to be very hot on that but if you can get body on body it seems to be way of playing on Aaron Gillard concentrating on the challenge ahead and successful as normal
here for Quilligan. Goes long, aiming for Peter Duggan down the middle. Dan Morrissey is there. Slipping is the fullback from Aha. Getting the ball out just a little bit. Darrell Dunham receiving the pass from William O'Donoghue. Gives it back in turn towards Casey. Barry Nash. Intercepted, just getting a touch was Ryan Taylor. Picked up by Dermot Bryans. Cleons is the referee. No foul given. Sent forward. Over towards Darrow Donovan. His feet are almost on the sideline. And he's still going for it. And he's got it. Brilliant play, Darrow Donovan. From Dune in County Limerick. An exception. Look where he is. Yeah, it's an unbelievable score. The player right out on the sideline. Ball down towards Shane O'Donnell. Kyle Hayes pulling on it. It was fair game. The ball was loose. The Morrissey brothers combined. Tom to Dan. Back in more familiar Terry wing back. Ava Quilligan has to come off his goal line. Ava Quilligan is tripped. And that's going to be a free out for Clare. Yeah, the normal wrestling match we saw against Cork with Galan inside is happening again, but in fairness to the clear defender in there, Keane Nolan's doing really, really well. Free is quickly taken. David McInerney. Adam Hogan. Back to McInerney again. He did well to control it. Needs a bit of support. Pulled on first time. Ball given away. Good work by Limerick. Kyle Hayes. Unmarked. The road Hegarty. Not a good thing from a clear perspective. Puts inside, shoots and scores. Brilliant play at the road Hegarty. But he was given a lot of space, I have to say, but he gets his first point in the Munster final. Quick puck out. Size level for the second time. No time for Brendan Cummins to speak. As that ball is sent in and sent over the bar. Yes. Well, that's a response by Carl Malone. It is. It's a gamer counter attack. It's worth watching here, Marky. Both goalies are cute as foxes. As soon as they see they have an opportunity, just go straight away, like here again. Ball sent down towards Big William to Big Garold. Hegarty. Giving it back. That is his dad actually outside. What a great hurler his dad was as well. Kyle Hanks heading towards the 45. We've seen this so many times. Putting it in. Half blocked. Good work by Dermot Ryan. And sent out in turn. Fair is David Fitzgerald. Skipping by his own 45. Plenty of clear players looking at, for the pass. He goes long towards Peter Duggan trying to get in. Nicky Quaid comes out with the ball. Good work by the keeper. Fair is Dan Morrison in control. Sending it down towards Dermot Burns. The play opening up into the centre towards William O'Donnell. He's on his own 65. He drops it into the space again towards Aaron Galan. The lad, Slither on the hurling, turns, given the space, given the time. This man can inflict serious damage to opposition, but not on this occasion. He normally is just outstanding. Puck out is quickly taken again. Did it go out over the sideline? Lansman says no. Limerick supporters were looking good. Rory Hayes did well to collect it. Two against one here. Trying to chip it up. Pushed away by Declan Hannon. Fairly, squarely. Good work there by Kyle Hayes. Claire Fowler, Limerick free. Yeah, Aidan McCarthy wanted to just get over it. There's no place to be flicking it up like that. Especially with Hannon or Hayes floating around you. They just nudge you out of the way. There's the pullback. Free is quickly taken again by Barry Nash. Over towards Jim Burns. Down the wing. Towards Tom Morrison. Was that a push in the back? I would have thought so. Jim Ryan. Referee said, play on. Body on body, Marty, you'll get away with that, seems here today. Brian Taylor is waiting for it. Mark Rogers is on the run. He takes the ball. He sends it over the bar. The people of Scarif, the people of Clare will be celebrating at one of their best up-and-coming stars. Is a star now. It's Mark Rogers. So sharp to be out in front of Nash like that, just over the shoulder without a thought. Nicky Quaid again aiming for Garrod Hegarty. John Conlon underneath it. Lovely stick work by Graham Mulcahy. John Conlon again coming in to converge to uh, help out Adam Hogan. Colin Malone arrives. They're bobbling there just a few metres in from the sideline. John Conlon putting his hurley in. The referee says, OK, enough is enough. There's going to be a throw ball here. 
just a few meters in from the sideline, as you can see. Liam Gordon bringing it forward just a little bit. Game played in a very sporting manner, despite all the, the hype and the tension. It's all hands on deck, but being played in a very positive way so far. Referee is given the free and giving it to Claire. Yes, I think it's Tony Kelly's second touch there after the, the point. And he gets it here, you can see the, the drag back is what the referee blew Darrow Dungan for. And again, Tony has decided to hit this from inside his own 45, it's a long ways back. Three times in All-Star, 2019, 20 and 22. He's going for the point. He's dropping to the right. And it's gone wide. Yeah, he's trying to get in the game, I think, Marty, by going back that far. He hasn't really been in it. He's shown, but they can't really get the ball to him. A bit too far out for Tony's range. Nicky Quaid again, aiming for Garod Hegarty. David Fitzgerald intervenes. Lovely hook by Graham Okay. Fitzgerald there battling. Barely keeping it in. His body is outside the line, but the ball is not. Shane O'Donnell gets the pass. Says thank you very much, David. Goes towards the Limerick goal post. Intercepted beautifully. Ball comes back towards uh, Clare again. Good work on this occasion by Tony Kelly. Sent in by David McInerney. And Nicky Quaid has all the time in the world to deliver a pass. Goes long. This time it's Tom Morrissey that he's aiming for, but David McInerney kept his eye on it, squeezes the ball out, sends it back first. Paul Malone, Barry Nash. It's swinging from end to end, non stop. Down for Kyle Hayes, looking for the pass. It's Darrow Donovan. Kyle Hayes is coming for the return, but O'Donovan goes long. Two against two. Seamus Flanagan, Aaron Gillard, Keen Nola, Killaloo against Patrick Swell. Beautiful stick work again by Aaron Gillard. He makes an angle for himself and he yeah. sends that high up. Fantastic. Really outstanding play by Aaron Gillard. Well, he's the best in the business, Mark. You can see him here. He's just tracking, tracking. Keen, you could say, should get closer to him, I suppose. They're never that comfortable with Gillard, giving him that much space to have a couple of looks at the target. He didn't disappoint the Limerick supporters and he got to swing the hurley. Long puck out again. This time caught by Dara Donovan. Passes with midfield partner. Good work by Tony Kelly. He wants to get involved. This is an opportunity. And it's straight between the posts and over the bar. Much better, Tony Kelly. Yeah, did all the hard work himself, taking it off. Well done, all like that. Cutting down the middle, he'll feel way, way better about himself, Marty, after that. Had to earn it himself. Great score. Hurler of the year 2013. Young hurler of the year as well. Tony Kelly. Mike Casey bypassing Peter Duggan. Heading towards the Clare 45. Drops it in towards Aaron Gillard. He's causing Clare serious problems. This time, Finn Nolan is close, but he crosses the line. It's a real Fouls knife edge. Forward. It's a real knife edge in there, Marty. The amount of space that Flanagan and Gillard have inside there. If you go tight, and now Nolan is about to be booked. That time, Gillard let him come close. Rolled him with the hurley. Spun him around. So it's an onus on the fries out the field. They said before the game to try to stop the ball from coming in. See, holding Galan's left hand there. Galan knows he's in control of that situation there with the hurl in his right. And he spun around lovely. And there's the Nolan. He had to give him that tug back. Keen Nolan hasn't played in any games in the championship. He is a surprise selection by Brian Lohan, considering Conor Cleary was unavailable. Word was that Paul Flanagan might be. Uh, brought in but there's no doubt that Clare have a problem here They're, they can't cope with Aaron Gillan and he's opening half hour Fitness to Nolan too as Gillan should slot this one over the bar it's up to his teammates as well to try to give him a bit of support it's not just down to the fact he's not able to do the job he just needs more support in there while he's doing it Marty six points for Aaron Gillan still one point between the teams Aver Quilligan has three options but he's intending to go long Nearly every occasion, dropping it down the middle towards Tony Kelly, battered away by Kyle Hayes. In comes Tom Murray, oh, lovely handball, back for Hayes. 
creating the space, creating the opportunity. And Kyle Hayes, is he going to avail of it? Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Created by the handpacks, the slickness of the speed of this. Beautiful, Kyle Hayes on the run, looks at the post, send it straight between them. Yeah, just ease through the ball as he struck, which is Morrissey's pass, obviously, the quick thinking. Hayes is ponying up the field a fair bit now as well, Marty, in the last 10 minutes or so. This time, Aver Crilligan goes reasonably short, I'd say, Whereas John Conlon. Tony Kelly comes looking for it. Graham Mulcahy was coming in to challenge. Tony Kelly goes for the score, back up the post. Grab, opportunity, goal for Clare! What a finish by Mark Rogers. And Clare and the crowd are gone mad. The long ball from Tony Kelly hit off the post. We saw Damien Comer do it for a goal by footballers against Roscama. We now see Mark Rogers doing it for Clare Hurlers against Limerick. Yeah, we said a bit of luck there, Marty could separate the teams. It also came off Morrissey's Hurley, I think, which put it in over the goalie's right shoulder rather than the left. You see a little block off it, but Rogers, in fairness to him, he spun around and hit it as hard as he could. Finds the back of the Limerick net, a huge fill-up for the banner around. The first green flag of the Munster Final 2023. Shane O'Donnell, as far as Aidan McCarthy, stepping into the middle field, middle of the field and grabbing the opportunity. Is there anybody back at home in Clare? The roar is deafening beyond belief. Four points for Aidan McCarthy in this Munster final. Yeah, he's on great space, you can see him there, he knows there's one thing getting the goal, the thought and then is that you win the next puck out, stop Limerick from getting a response, and fairness to Clare, they've done that. Long ball, Jim, Jim McRae beating Tom Morrissey and they're piling on the pressure. He lays back the shoulders, he's going for it, but it's gone to the left and wide. Four wides for Clare in this match, but they have managed in the opening 32 minutes to score a goal and 11 points. Puck out is buried, coming forward at pace. John Connor stepping inside into the Limerick half of the field, dropping in towards Peter Juggan. And Nicky Quaid had to be alerted his near post. Amazing what a goal can do psychologically for a team or indeed to concede it. David Fitzgerald. Double, treble marked. Good work by Dara Donovan. Scoops it away. First Seamus Flanagan. Flanagan in turn lays it off. Coming forward from right half back is Jim Burns. Burns between the 45 and 65. He's looking good. It's not good enough though. Ball is wide. Fifth wide of the game for the All-Ireland and Munster champions. Yeah, normally the response is that man your shot just puts it over the bar and saunters back. But they're in a bit of a storm here now at the moment, Limerick. Again, Aver Crilligan aims, this time for Aidan McCarthy. Knocked away by Declan Hannon, picked up by Paul Malone. Survives the initial challenge from David Reedy. Gone forward is Ryan Taylor, looking at options. He's going to go for the point. He uses a short grip, but it went outside the post. And that was an opportunity for the Banner County, which went astray. Huge disappointment in size around the, the Gaelic grounds. Long ball again. Milan and Seamus Flanagan are the targets. Aver Quilligan stood his ground. Steps away from Graham Mulcahy. Good vision. Gets it first, David McInerney. The Tullerman sends it down the middle. Limerick will look to be a little bit exposed here. Ryan Taylor missed an opportunity a moment ago. Mark Rogers is to his right. He'll go for it. Mark my words, and Nicky Quaid had to be there. Great save by the keeper. Bat it down for his Nicky Quaid again. It really is pulsating as it normally is between Clare and Limerick. It's swinging from one end to the other. Jerome Hegarty and Jim O'Brien, the two big men, six foot five, six foot six, they're on the ground. And it's Jim O'Brien that's on the ground. Jerome Hegarty hasn't heard the whistle. The referee has given him a free half a mile down the road. Limerick supporters won't be happy on that one. I'd say he thought that Hegarty had maybe overcarried, and that's why he was given the free. There's a bit of a tussle inside there anyway as well, but it'll be a free in to Limerick. A little bit of afters, but to be fair, the other players got involved quickly and they were actually pulling them apart rather than getting involved to their great credit. Name Gordon and, of course, Garrod Hegarty have met before in the sponsor just, championship campaign. Just explain to Garrod there as to why he, he pulled back the free. See it here when Hegarty gets inside, there's the initial free, and it was just steps then, and we think after that, but you're in the stand from um, Limerick, you're wondering why the advantage wasn't played longer. 
Liam Gordon is going to end up a word with his umpires. Meanwhile, Aaron Galan is putting the slither on the ground. And I have to say, in the first half, I thought Liam Gordon has done well as the referee, uh, Brendan. Yeah, look, he's, in fairness to him, he's, he's done fine. He's let the game flow. Anybody putting an arm in over the top or a tug of the jersey, but he's seen it, he's blown it, and he's allowed the physical contest that we would expect in the game of hurling as well. It all depends on what his umpires have seen here, maybe, that's caused Adam Hogan to be on the deck. He possibly could have given Garoda an advantage there, to be fair now. Yeah, that is the thing, all right. Once he broke inside a man like Garoda Hegarty, we'd like to see him given the, given the advantage. But maybe, maybe he thought it was steps and then he turned it back is the only reason I can see for him. Pulling the free back that Aaron Galan has an opportunity now. Free going to be taken by Aaron Galan. Gone into injury time. And Liam Gordon is actually turning in looking Hegarty. for Garrod Hegarty. And they have a history they met before in the, the Limerick Waterford game. It would be interested to see now if he's going to book Garrod Hegarty for something that happened inside on the clear 21. Is he going to turn the free over and throw in the ball? Would be the question. Well, he's giving him a detailed explanation. And he's giving him a yellow card. Coming in at 36 here minutes. Now. I don't think there was that. I don't think there was anything there in There wasn't that a huge all. amount in it either way now. The clear defenders, as you'd expect, for St. Garrod, how you didn't get in for a goal. He was claiming that I was uh, pulled back too soon. It's harsh enough yellow there, I think. I would agree. As Aaron Galan sends that over the bar for his seventh point of the game. I think, we, I mean, the road Hegarty was getting a rough time from the Clare backs there, but he was picked out as the Here's one. Here's the goal opportunity the then. Yeah, exactly, he was. But for them, for that minute or two here, we see the goal chance. That Limerick defence was wide open now. And seldom you get a shot planting your feet on Nicky Quaid, but he did really, really well to get down to save it. Good work by Dan Morrissey. Flicking it on for his Kyle Hayes. Shoves off the shoulder of David Fitzgerald, yeah. but he takes too many steps. Free Adam, to Clare. Adam Hogan, Peter Duggan, you name it. Shane O'Donnell, Fitzgerald all around the ball carrier. All trying to turn him over. It's, it's moments like that as well when you're down there, Marty. It gives you a huge lift when you can get someone like Kyle Hayes to overcarry like that. Aidan McCarthy has come out to take this break. He's inside his own 65-meter line, as you can see from that camera angle. This to give Clare a four-point advantage going in at the break, surely. Hits it well. Dropping in, dropping in, and dropping to the wrong side of the pass. I wonder is... Jim O'Brien able to hit freeze from that distance there. The breeze seems to have picked up, of course, slightly there, but if we call half time now, Marty. It's been a pulsating opening 37 minutes with Mark Rogers scoring that goal after half an hour. The essential difference between the teams. The atmosphere is electric, the tension is palpable, but we have reached halfway. For Brian Lohan, he must be well pleased with his team. They have performed well after maybe just a little bit of nerves at the beginning. But look at the scene, look at the arena, look at the Munster hurling final, and thankfully there's another half to go. Half time, Clare, one goal, 11 points. Limerick, 11 points. We'll be right back with analysis and Joanne after the break. Here's a few home truths for you. In Bantry, they're running things. In between walking things. In Clanmel, they're making pacemakers work. In Fairview, they're making bicycles work. In Waterford, they're growing companies and veggies and hurlers. Dingle has the best after work points. So does Glasnevin and Westport and Dunedee. Limerick has a pharmacy. Grange Castle has a film scene. And Trim has a 
this scene. Only FRS knows these things because we have people all over Ireland. So if your heart wants home but your head has more questions, ask us. At half time at the Gaelic grounds, it is just that goal that is separating Clare and Limerick. But many people watching might reckon that it's the banner who've been on top in that opening 35 minutes. So 1-11 to Clare, 11 points to Limerick at the break. Limerick, of course, playing in their own backyard. Some very key uh, stats that might tell us a bit about that opening half, including the fact that Clare have won 15 turnovers to just eight for Limerick. And the, the Clare man beside me has to be pleased with how that opening half went. Yeah, please, Joanna. Um, maybe I'm even a bit greedy saying we might have been a pint or two more up. But that was really only in that last frantic five minutes where we had a couple of chances. Ryan Taylor maybe should have picked out Tony Kelly with the one he put wide and Nicky made a brilliant save then from Mark Rogers as well. So, yeah, overall fairly level. Clare edging it slightly overall, I think, but and the shot count will tell you that, but at the same time, nothing in it. A lot of mistakes, Joanne, to be honest, but that's the nature of it. Everyone is wound up, everyone is going savage uh, and lads are out on their feet at the time, at times, but then they recover and they go again and that's the, the pattern of it. It took us a while before we got any goal chances and the one obviously came from a rebound that came down from the post. Yeah, and I think Ever Culligan has done really well. The previous puck out to this one, Joanne, he went long down the middle. Kyle Hayes just won it easily. He has to stay brave and that's the key. Went to John Conlon. Tony's just shooting for a point. You've got to be Conor Forward's dream. I think in the late uh, 
Teddy playing with John Fitzgibbon. That was John Fitzgibbon all over. Ball off the post, down Mark Rogers. When he gets that ball like that, he will finish it. And I think the key thing for me there, though, is Ava Quilligan has to stay brave with the puck outs. He has to say, if there's a guy on 15, 20 yards of space, I've got to hit him. Because if you keep lumping down on Burns and Hayes and Hennon, you won't get the return. But if Mark Rogers, he's 1-1 got now from play, so he must be saying inside that dressing room, this is my day here, come on. Yeah, well, he, and he got in again, uh, Joe. Yeah, he got in again, and same thing again, working the ball out, Claire, going through. Like, Ryan Taylor, as, as Anthony said, he had a chance before this, probably should have passed Tony Kelly, but here he took the right option, I think. And Rogers, he took the right option, well, bounced the ball. Unbelievable save from Nicky Quaid. I don't think people understand, that's the hardest shot for a goalie to save. Back up the field, Garage catch, catches or breaks it to himself, goes through, probably foul there, advantage probably, he had a bit of steps, fouled again here. Now, probably like what happened after here, he kind of trips him more so than that and picks him up a little bit. I think in fairness, when you see it from behind here, probably got a knock in the head. I think he just got his left, left arm under the leg, picks him up now. I think Adam Hogan played a little bit as well. He kind of, you can see him on the ground, he's okay. Um, but he wanted to be careful. Do you know, he's he's obviously a, a, a looked at man, so he'd want to be careful with what he does. I think a yellow card is enough. I don't think it was a red or anything like that, but just no need for it. I, I wonder if you've ever been picked up a little bit by Garoud. <laughs> <laughs> you do not look like a happy man, Shane Darling. And you turned around t about 10 minutes from the end of that half and you said, Galan is the only thing keeping the minute. But he is, I mean, like, Limerick, you know, they've 11 points got. He's got seven, two from play, but he's actually won a lot of the frees as well. Um, and, and when Limerick have had the luxury of getting out, you know, Claire are working hard, but one easy ball to another. David Reedy's have to spray the ball into the corner. You can see the space there. He robs a couple of yards. In the fairness to Keane Nolan, listen, it was a massive decision by Brian Lowen to fire him in there on top of the, one of the most foreign forwards in the country. And in fairness, this Aaron Galan is in bed up a stick. Again with Dara Donovan, we can see they're targeting that space. The Clare boys inside, they're trying to keep tight. Uh, but this is just unbelievable skill. There are some things that, you know, you can't allow for. He's uh, on fire he, as well. Yeah, he's on fire. He brings yeah, the ball yeah. out over the shoulder. Um, but, you know, Keane Nolan, in fairness, he's trying his best. You know, we can see here in the next tip as well that Mike Casey, modern day full back, had nothing on from the puck out, ran up the field, ball in super turn flick and taken down by Keane Nolan. But, um, you know, I think it's, it's probably the story of the game, being honest. I know people at home might have the luxury of seeing what's going off the ball. In both full back lines, there's a lot of pulling the dragon. Mike Casey got a yellow card here. He eventually got a yellow card here. You know, Garo got a yellow card for what he done. I mean, if that's the yellow card, there's a lot more people out there that could have got him as well. But overall, I think Clare and Margie are the better team. 11 points, Aaron is, has seven of them. There's a lot of players underperform for Limerick. And I know they played well there a couple of weeks ago against Cork, but, you know, I, I wouldn't be too confident as it stands right now. Yeah, but, but he is keeping a minute. But the, I think the Clare half back line, Dermot Ryan and Tom Marcy, we spoke about it before, and Dermot Ryan is coming way out on top on that. And, and Davy Mack as well, catching a few puck outs, turning the ball over. They're having a massive say on this game. Um, like, they haven't hit the heights yet. Neither side have actually played oh, unbelievably oh. well. We still only have, what, 111 to 11 points. Usually these matches are 16, 17 point games at halftime. No, but we do have plenty of hurling brains knocking together in dressing rooms at the moment. So it'll be very, very interesting to see what they come up with.
We'll be heading straight to Croke Park after the mayhem in Limerick. Kilkenny with some key mess men missing from their team, going for four titles in a row. But of course, they're first under their new manager, Derek Ling, as well. So they've arrived at Croke Park. It's Galway. They'll be facing no sign of the tribe there just yet. That has a four o'clock for a win, so we'll be heading over there once this ends. Clare on top, remember, by a goal against Limerick. Limerick underperforming. Shane, the three of you have been chatting about what will change, what should change, what has to change. What have you come up with? Well, on the Clare side of it, I think they have to put Adam Hogan back in and Aaron Galan. Keen Olin's on a yellow card now. I mean, what are, the, what, what are John and Paul and the management team saying inside? Will he pepper ball inside to Aaron? Your man is on a yellow card. The one difference I see today... Uh, you know that they've done against Cork is they hit high ball in the top of Aaron against Cork and he caught a couple of them he hasn't really got any you know he's got great low ball in and he has done damage with him the opportunity for goal just haven't been there on the Limerick side you know there's Carl O'Neill Keane Lynch and Peter Casey to come in I mean what a trio to bring in I don't think they'll make a substitution half time they'll probably wait for five or ten minutes into the second half wait for the crowd to get involved bring them all on and they're, listen they probably have a stronger bench than Clare have but if I was Brian Lohan you'd have to be worried about Keane Nolan full back Shamey Flanagan got eight points in last year's Munster final as well. We haven't seen a huge amount of him, Joe. No, there hasn't been, but I think they're more targeting Aaron Galan today more so than, than Shamey. Like, there hasn't been much ball going into him as such, but as Shane was saying, I'd say they'll change it up a little bit. Maybe they'll run it a little bit more, maybe they might go long. Like, at times, they've often changed at half time, changed up their tactics, run through the min centre, and then get runners going from deep. Now they're hitting a little bit crossfield ball. I think if they do go long and into the into the goals, they could get a goal or two with Galan in there. Claire, of course, they haven't hit their top form either, have they, Anthony? Have they a lot more in them, do you think? I, th I think they have, Joanne, and I think the chance is there now. If you're in that dressing room, you're saying, lads, kick for glory here, like, you know, 25 years. What a chance in front of us. I do agree with Shane. We have issues in the full back line. Maybe young Hogan to go back. You have Shane Amore, you have... Paul Flanagan you know but I think the forwards nobody really has taken it completely by the scruff of the neck they've all had their moments Ryan Taylor started great Shane O'Donnell started great Tony was quiet Tony kicked in with two points you know hit the ball off the post Ed McCarthy got the last score as well like you know so look at the chances there and hopefully from our point of view the lads will, will go all out now to try and bring it home you, you may not realise it, but just a reminder that this is being played in Limerick despite that massive, massive cheer that you heard for the Clare players who are returning to the pitch. They are leading by a goal, but of course, that sort of a half-time deficit means nothing these days. Let's head back for the second half to Brendan and Marty. Thank you very much, Joanne. Yes, we're looking forward to this uh, second half. Full house signs have gone up around uh, the grounds here at the Grayley Grounds, and uh, certainly tickets were almost impossible to get. I know people are watching all over the world. Uh, from New York to Lanzarote to uh, Hong Kong and uh, loads of messages coming our way. Quick hello to Patricia Hackett who's in the hospital and so many of our friends and neighbours in hospitals all over the country wish you well and a speedy recovery and I hope you enjoy us the second half of the Munster Final. We are thinking of you as we start this Munster Hurling Final second half with just a goal between the sides. Clare having managed 1-11, 1-8 from 10. Here's David Reedy setting about their stall in the early stages. Good score. Very good score. Yeah, that's his his skin there. He finds pockets of space. Look on the right of your screen there. You see David Fitzgerald is over on Kyle Hayes now at the start of the, the second half, and he's coming back down the pitch a bit. No changes on either side as the ball drops down. Breaking ball picked up by Declan Hand. Quick hands for as Barry Nash. Kyle Hayes. Barry Nash gone for the return. Hannon goes down the middle channel, John Conlon, despite 40,000 people, I could hear him say, leave it, and uh, Rory Hayes did, that's a good ball to Johnny Kelly, but his first touch left him down, he recovered well, and he get inside the road, Hegarty, still Tony Kelly, protects himself from the challenge, but he hit it too sharply, too much to the left and wide. Disappointment for the Ballier club man. It is, um, just when he didn't get the first ball to hand, he was always going to be under pressure with Hegarty following him. Just to follow that statistical trail, by the way, Limerick scored 11 points in that first half, six from play. Pick forward first, John Conlon. David McInerney is calling for it, but uh, David Reedy seems to have been uh, 
challenging unfairly. Yeah, and whatever bit of a breeze there is in it, Marty, just with Limerick now, you can see that last delivery from Nash and went long and high in. Granted, it was swept up here by Conlon. But they will be able to get that ball in that little bit longer now. Yeah, I see the flags over the stand at the far side blowing a little bit more strongly. You can see the hills of Clare in the background from our camera angle as the ball drops in. Peter Duggan chasing after it. Nicky Quaid underneath it. Safe as always. Under a bit of pressure. Lays it off for us, Dan Morrissey. And Nicky Quaid was being fouled. So there's a free out for Limerick. Good hands as always. Keeps his eye on the ball, Nicky Quaid. An exceptional goalkeeper. And very much part of Limerick's success story over the last number of years. And I do believe that tomorrow is his birthday as well. So happy birthday, Nicky Quaid. Will you have five in a row Munster Championship medals? That'll be more important to Nicky, I'd say. As the ball comes out, there is Tom Morrissey. Under a bit of pressure, Graham Mulcahy nips in. Batting hard, John Conlon has to slip them in the left paw. Sends it down the middle, he was being hooked. Hooked to his opposite number six, Declan Hannon. He's gone to ground under severe pressure. No foul given. Referee says play on. Bursting forward is Kyle Hayes. Rounds the challenge, still Kyle, heading towards the 45, past the 45, and uh, the limit. Rough reflex says play on. Yeah, tangle like the a... legs, I think, is what he, he instructed there. David McInerney sends it down, but Dan Morrissey is underneath it, took his eye off it slightly. Comes for as Mike Casey. Dermot Burns is available on the wing. Goes long again, aiming for a big Seamus Flanagan, heading out towards the sideline, can he keep it in? He did well to keep it in. A race for possession, Adam Hogan is there, ahead of Graham Mulcahy. Mulcahy, the wily old fox there from Kinmalik, gets the Hurley in. That's a compliment to a, an experienced player as the ball comes back outside, and John Conlon has it. Conlon steps away from the challenge, uses the short grip. Available is Ian McCarthy. Inside him is the goal scorer, Mark Rogers, but McCarthy goes for the score. The umpire is going to signal why. Wrong call by Ed McCarthy. He really should have fed Mark sure. Rogers. Wrong call by a mile there, Marty. The ball needs to go into Rogers there. He's straight in on Nicky Quaid and has a choice and he goes lower over the bar. Little moments. Puck out comes first, Darrell Donovan. Diagonal ball. This time aiming for Aaron Gillard. John Condon is back there That's ahead a of free. him. And the referee had spotted the infringement. And he's right. And he is right. Yeah, Key Nolan was tugging. Tugging with his left arm. He needs to be really, really careful in there now. He's on a yellow. You'd nearly say that that's a tick with it. Once more, and you can see it coming in there. See his left arm wrapped around Gallant's curly holding hand. Like he's walking him up the aisle there. But it's a free. I think Brian Lohan will have to make a change there. Yeah, they're talking underneath us here now. Yeah, it, is, it is a problem, and he's on a yellow. Is the backroom team decision will have to be made here now to make a change? I would suggest Aaron Gillan lifts and strikes, puts that over the bar, adding to his seven first half points. One point between the teams again, straight down the middle towards Tony Kelly. Let's fly, oh. hits the slipper beautifully. Straight between the posts and over the bar. Now that is Tony Kelly. It's quality. Gets into that cap in the middle of the field. In fairness, Reedy turned around and he was giving it to Burns. Why didn't you call me and tell me that he's there? But he's ghosted in behind and broke the tackle. Puck out by Nicky Quaid. Dropping down in the clear half. Bouncing ball, breaking ball. William O'Donoghue is on to it. So too is Graham Mulcahy. Referee says... Limerick were being fouled, were being held back. And that's going to be a free for Limerick, just to the right of the post. And another simple tap over score for Aaron Gillard. Yeah, it's just a pull back more so. He's not really going to win early, I say, then. And Graham Mulcahy going in. David McInerney getting an explanation from the referee. It's a good thing to see. It is in the face of Ian Gordon. He's had conversations around the pitch with the players. It's good to see a referee doing that, especially in the high octane atmosphere that we're looking at down there and the fine margins, especially the fine. He hits it high and he hits it well over the bar. One point between the teams again. 
amazing. Reedy's in the middle of the pitch now. He's looking over his shoulder, trying to find where Tony Kelly is. He's learning. Long tuck out, again, battered away by David Burns. Into the pack, to David Reedy. Didn't quite connect. You knew by the way he was holding the hurling, he rushed his shot. Ball is wide. Six wide of the game for Limerick. Referee Liam Gordon is getting some information. He's Aidan he's McCarthy and um, Declan Hannon in the middle there. We're having a bit of a wrestling match off the ball. He's just pointing at the tube while the play was going on earlier. Ever Quilligan goes short and then off to the long ball. Dropping it down towards Peter Duggan. Batted away, Ed McCarthy got a touch to it. He's also holding Kyle Hayes, got away with it. Shane O'Donnell needs to release the ball. Good work. Ah, oh, brilliant, Barry Nash. Excellent play by the corner back, but the pass goes astray. Clare could win the shutter back, and they do. Mark Rogers, not just a goal scorer, but a grafter as well. Oh, yeah. Now that is class. Mark Rogers oozing from every pore in his body the DNA that is the hurling gene. Yeah, Look at this. Yeah, he bet Dick and Hannon that foot race out as well. Hannon gave him had two yards at the start. Rogers tossed him out. That possession. Tuck out as quickly did. Down towards David Reedy. Ball is dropping in towards that. Oh, that's a sweet ball to Aaron Galan. He's setting up for the goal. Here it comes. Back in the net. Too slow in the switch, Marty, I'm afraid. Shane Dowling set it at half time. But Keen Nolan was under serious pressure in there. Galan got him one on one again. Nolan slipped. See it here. Spun him around lovely. This time he couldn't pull him down. It'd be black car territory. One bounce past the goalkeeper. That's the quality of Galan. He'd have been saying it at half time, Marty. Look, lads, I have acres of space inside. Just get me one bounce in. And I'll do that. Unstoppable. Aaron Galan. Goal and nine points in this monster final. But the move that we've been talking about, Brendan, if I may say so, since around two o'clock, hasn't happened. Down at the other end, Clare going forward, the referee has his arm up, he's going to give a free, there was no advantage developing, and there's a free in for Clare. Well, the positive thing for Clare and Marty is obviously they're creating goal-scoring chances. Again, that was another opportunity there, and the pass just didn't get away. You can see here Kyle Hayes in a, in a tackle, the jersey being tugged as well by Willow Donahoe. And just Kyle Hayes then there, with a little bit of afters then onto the shoulder. It's one of those moments as well, I suppose, when you slow it down. It always looks that touch worse than those examples, yeah. in fairness. Almost looked like a throw ball as well, Brendan, when you look at it in slow motion there. But more important thing is that McCarthy has an opportunity now to level the game again. Shane Meehan is coming on for Clare. And the player that's going off is Aidan McCarthy. It surprises me a little bit, Brendan, does it you? Um, a little, yeah, I suppose. They probably wanted more legs around that middle third because that green wave is starting to is starting to come up along the pitch. Tony Kelly now takes over the free-taking responsibilities. This is to level the match for the fourth time. Tony Kelly facing difficult enough angle. Heading down towards those Ennis Road goalposts. Follow through is good. Never in any doubt. Tony Kelly gets his fourth point of the game. Yeah, Douglas comes out to the half ball right now. Meehan stays, I would expect, inside. William O'Donoghue. Darrell Donovan. John Conley. Seamus Flanagan. Knocking it back cleverly. Far as Tom Morrissey. Oh. oh, fantastic. Now that's why they're the Munster and All Ireland champions. Because when you have classy players like Tom Morrissey that steps up here under pressure, and this is a pressure cook of the Munster final, and score points like that. Yeah, here we go now. Peter Casey's in for Graham Mulcahy, but again a class point from Morrissey. Hits the ball high over his head, over the bar. Peter Casey on, Graham Mulcahy has done his bit as the technical games along the sideline are played out. Limerick leading by a point. Aver Quilligan going long again. 
Down to Shane O'Donnell. Ball bouncing. Picked up by Garrod Hegarty. Looks and has the time. Send it down towards Aaron Galar. Keen Nolan struggling with him. Aaron Galar yeah. sending that over the bar. Yeah, change has to be coming soon now. How much longer we can look at with Keen Nolan inside there. But you can see the space inside, but three or four or five yards off of um, Aaron Galan. In that case, you might as well be over the other side of the field to give that man a foot is too much. Goal and ten points for Aaron Galan. I wonder when will Clare make that tactical move because certainly Keen Nolan is struggling. Trying to mark him now at this stage. Ball is passed out. Chance for Tony Kelly. Right to the post. Blocked down. Knocked away. Limerick beginning to show their class. Darrell Donovan going long. Again towards Aaron Galar. Trouble immediately. And he turns him so easily. And he's heading towards goal. On the 20. 13 shot. Brilliant save by Ava Quilligan. Out towards John Conlon. And the ball, the referee has given a free out. Yeah, I feel for Keane Nolan down there, Marty. It's the one sign when a guy is nervous, he's on the ground more times than he's standing up. And Keane Nolan is starting to slip and slide around the Gaelic grounds. Galan comes in. And of course, he was going to go low. Quilligan did well. It's a nice height for the goalkeeper. Quilligan did very well here, Brendan. He did. It was a good save. Good and he save. broke it away, too, which is key high and away, away from the danger area. Ball comes down for us, Dermot Ryan. Breaking ball, coming through at speed. It's Mark Rogers again, he gets a pull on the ball. Easy for Nicky Quaid. Down for us, William O'Donoghue, in the D. Unmarked at the moment is David Reedy, looking at the pulse, going for the point. Has he the strength, has he the legs? Yes, he has. Great score, David Reedy. His second point of the game. Yeah, he's picking up those pockets of space there. We saw it last year, actually, against Galway in the All-Ireland semi-final. He come on, he finds space. Deadly accurate there. More concerning for Limerick up the other end of the field is that Mike Case is down. His left ankle there looks like he rolled it in the last passage of play. Decision for John Kiley below. Having that conversation now. And another decision up the other end for Brian Lohan as to what he's going to do with Nolan inside him. Galan. I see Shane and Maury is uh, warming up in front of us off yeah. camera as we're looking at Mike Casey. There's Shane and Maury. Won an All-Ireland medal in 2013. He obviously is going to come in to the uh, clear defence. Whether that means in the full back line, half back line is normally his uh, place of residence, but uh, let's see what happens. So Shane Amori making way for Keen Nolan, who played his part in this Munster hurling final. Very testing afternoon for him, for a young man who hadn't played any championship matches uh, so far in this campaign, which was a big ask. No doubt, no doubt it is, but now it's Shane Amore is the man inside. Wrestling with Galan already. Breaking ball, Tony Kelly, the king has it. Manages to get up for Shane O'Donnell, being pursued by Tom Morrissey. Still Shane O'Donnell, trying to get his way through, dancing around, lays it off. Did he take too many steps? Here's Shane Meehan, giving it back right Mark Rogers. Little dummy, how to uh, get the shot in. But this is ferocious defending by Limerick. Superb, as the ball is there between the... 13 metre line and the 20. Look at that by Limerick defending. Putting in the hits fair and square. Just chasing the slipper. The road Hegarty. Backtracking towards the corner flag. About to pull the ball and gets it blocked superbly by <laughs> Peter Duggan. Ball is put out over the sideline. There was pushing yep. on Mark Rogers. Referee is correct. It's a free end for Clare. Yeah, he's wrapping the actions in his hold. It's a tackle now and hurling has gone a bit like football. Put in your hand to take it out. The referee is showing there. The both arms are in around. What an unbelievable pass to play in the heat that we have down there. You see both hands coming in, although the first to Willow Dunham, we did take his hand back out. When you look at the replay, it was a bit of a soft free, it was, wasn't it, Brendan? It was, to be fair. He did take his hands back out. He didn't wrap them all the way around the, the Clare player. 43,756. Massive crowd at this Munster Hurling final. Just been announced full house, as I mentioned earlier. A little bit of concern about Mark Rogers there. Knowing the Rogers and the great family in Scarif, I can assure you, he won't be coming off that easily. And all the players around the pitch are taking on water. You can see the run from Shane O'Donnell there as the wing forward. Morrissey was tracking him back. Twinkle toes around, gets the pass over. 
Again, hooking and blocking coming in from all angles. There's Casey coming back to win back possession. Everybody fighting to protect their own goal. Either way, opportunity for Tony. 19 minutes are there to go. Difficult enough angle. The ball is wide. It's Clare's ninth wide of the game. He drinks his half time now, obviously. Limerick on three points ahead. Clare were 111 to 11 in front at the break. They've turned it around magnificently. Peter Casey. Peter Casey was clearly being fouled. And that's going to be a free in for Limerick. There's Adam Hogan need well there to stop Casey releasing the ball because Hegarty had drifted inside him. Again, you see the swarm defences in there. Very hard if your referee tries to decide it's a free out for overcarrying or a free in, but in fairness, I think the higher arm across the shoulder of Casey was the deciding factor. Aaron Gillard, 110 to his credit so far. Never in any doubt. 111 out of that 118. It's pretty awesome. Aber Quilligan goes down the middle. Ball skips off the hurley. Brian Taylor, John Conlon is there trying to kick it out. Good work by Shane O'Donnell. Continues to work hard. Advantage being given. David Fitzgerald on his shoulder was Jim O'Brien. Jim O'Brien trying to take the shot. The referee had his arm up. No advantage being given. He felt that Jim O'Brien had the time he to did. take the shot. Yeah, he left it road. And Ferris has been relatively consistent on, on that tease. But it was Darrell Donovan who got him. Jim O'Brien now has the helmet off, just giving himself an opportunity to get back. But the ref is letting play go on. Barry Nash goes long. Brilliantly caught, David Reedy, looking for support of Garoad Hegarty. Tom Morrissey is there, the referee has his arm stretched, he's allowing the play to continue on, and that's over the bar. Great play by Limerick, that's Tom Morrissey's third point of the match. Reedy, look at that, the height that he's gotten up, he's had a huge influence on this game, Marty. He's had that composure to top it back for an easy score. The Morrissey, now it looks like below that we're going to have Colin Cochran coming in. Colin Cochran. Brown. But Valley Brown is right. He's coming on for Declan Hannon. Fine hurler, this lad. I've seen him play previously in the championship, but also indeed in the league. I think he'd be an automatic choice in every other county in Ireland. Oh, he's only 21. And the first of Declan Hannon about four or five minutes ago around the middle third of the pitch. It looks like he got a dead leg in the quad there and he's left. He was struggling a little. In fairness, he did put his hand up and say, I need to come off, which is experience as well. Declan Hannon, captain of this Limerick team over a golden era for the Shannon Siders. As Clare tried to find the rhythm again. Well won by Peter Duggan, giving it into the pack. There's an opportunity here, but the first touch by Ryan Taylor left him down. It was unlucky. Comes back out first, David Fitzgerald. Making an angle for himself, takes a shot in. Nicky Quaid is there, backs it forward. Clare looking for the scores now to get him back into the match. Comes back out first, Tony Kelly. Tony, blocked down, brilliant, Kyle Hayes. Putting the hard work in. The rebound comes out to the All-Ireland and Munster champions. And they're looking like Munster and All-Ireland champions now. David Reedy sending it over towards Aaron Gillard. Can he turn Shane Amore? He can't. Amore gets a little shot in, just enough to get it first Malone. Malone turns, gives it back for Shane Amore. Shane Amore bypasses the first challenge, David Reedy. Loves to run an opponent. Referee says play on. No, he doesn't. Well, he does. He's giving him the advantage. Shane O'Donnell in front of the post. Will he allow it to stand? Yep. Yes, he will. That's over the bar. Brilliant play by Clare. It it's Shane our Moore. first score in 10 minutes. It is Shane Moore. He's winded there a bit now. You can see the shot Kyle Hayes got him just to release it. Kyle Hayes, I think he's going to get a yellow card and earn the middle of the field. But again, Tony Kelly blocked down. It's the second time it's happened in this half. The point you expect him to get it high over the advancing players. Hurley just hits him. By the way, it's a point clear, really needed. You see here, you see the instant again. Kyle Hayes lined him up. Yellow card, Shane Amore looks like he's fine. Yellow card for the number seven. It's clear, introduce 
Aaron Shanahan. It's Peter Duggan that's going to be making way as Claire rearranged the forward lineup in a hope to break down this Limerick defence. They're 14 minutes or more to reduce down that four point advantage that the champions presently hold. Limerick now as well, ball on the bench. Carl O'Neill is going to be introduced by John Kiley. In the original lineup that was announced during the week. Richie English also has uh, been introduced. Those two players coming on. Casey, I think, is the one. He's Tom Morrissey and Mike Casey. He's up and off there, Casey. Apparently, his ankle. He wasn't able to run it off. Good experience to have Richie English coming in. Long puck out coming down, trying to attack the ball. It's the left corner back, Rory Hayes. Player under pressure in the all half back line. This time, John Conlon is fouled, and it's a free for the Banner County boys. There was still time for Clare to rectify the situation here, but they are struggling. The All Ireland and Munster champions have been absolutely brilliant in this second half. Mark Rogers has taken over the free taking here. The long range freeze haven't worked out for them this afternoon for Clare. He hits this well, it's dropping in. Attacking the ball is Dan Morrissey knocking out Shane O'Donnell. Skips by the first challenge. Trying to, he's well surrounded. He's nowhere to go. Kyle Hayes is in there. Still Shane O'Donnell. Kyle Hayes comes away with it. Blocked in this occasion. Good work by Claire by Aaron Shanner. The hits are going in shoulder to shoulder and a little bit more. Sideline ball. Which way is it going? It's going to Claire. Clear supports on the far side aren't overly happy with Kyle Hayes. You can see Shanner here. Great block. Look at that. Hurley goes in halves as well. Never mind that, he loses the hurley and he goes again. Such courage. David Fitzgerald taking the sideline ball as Brian Lohan watches along the sideline. Again, Shane O'Donnell, David Fitzgerald are going from a very tight angle. And that is lashed over the bar. Some hands from Shane O'Donnell there, like the ball was caught. And he just seemed, I don't know how he caught it, but he got it through to Fitzgerald. Just blazed it over the bar. Exactly what Clare needed now to hit the crowd behind him. You can hear it. And touching by the saffron and blue that seems to be everywhere, I'm not too sure there's anybody back in the Banner County because the roaring is absolutely ginormous here. Paul Malone sending it down, but Barry Nash has the situation well read. Kyle Hayes is calling for it. Jim Burns is available as well. Tony Kelly was coming in to hook him but didn't quite connect. Down towards Seamus Flanagan. Ava Quilligan has all the time in the world to go long. Sending it down. Barry Nash again coming across to anticipate what's happening. Shane O'Donnell slipped and slide. Totally accidental. High challenge by Dermot Ryan on Carl O'Neill. Got away with it. Comes back. As uh, Limerick go in pursuit of more scores. This time, one ball is won by David McInerney. Laying it off quickly. Tony Kelly wanted it short. There's too much, too many Limerick players up there from a clear point of view. Nipping in. Good work. Carl Malone is almost on his own. He has to try and find somebody available. He finds the right man. His midfield partner, David Fitzgerald. Mickey Quaid puts the hurley over the crossbar to make sure it doesn't uh, register a point. And Limerick come away with it again. Dermot Burns going for distance. The road Hegarty underneath it, knocked away by Shane Amore. In comes Rory Hayes, Shane Amore, free to Clare. Ten minutes to go. Three points between the teams. Crap developing for Clare. Yeah, Rory Hayes done really well inside on Flanagan. Actually, the last two plays, he played Flanagan really well to let the ball through to Quilligan. Who actually hit the ball long, and in fairness to Quilligan, he needs to be a little bit more like Nicky Quaid now in these last ten minutes of Clare to win. Use the ball smartly, be brave. Rory Hay is still getting some attention. Tara Donovan is coming off as well with the blood soap in the middle of the pitch. You'd expect he wouldn't be off for long, yeah. The change is necessary, but it also gives both teams a breather in this sweltering heat. It's about 23 degrees, but very humid as well. As Limerick introduced another substitute, that's uh, Adam English. 
The last thing Clare need as well now is Rory Hayes to be out. Just for the record, by the way, Limerick scores in the second half. They were 111 to 11 points down. They've scored 1-8 in the second half to Clare's five points. So physically, in terms of possession, in terms of the scoreboard, Limerick have clearly won the second half and won, won it handsomely. And yet, there's only three points between the teams. Good hands, Rory Hayes. Ava Krilligan. David McInerney. Into the middle towards Dermot Ryan. Gets it over first John Conlon, despite Gerard Hegarty's efforts to block it. Still John Conlon. Stopped on this occasion by Peter Casey. Let's fly with a ball that is dropping in. Aaron Shatterhead keeps it in somehow. Nicky Quaid is there. Clare need a little bit more options up front. They just seem to be static with little or no running into space. As Limerick come away with it with Kyle Hayes. Adam English steps into the cauldron of a Munster hurling final with his very first touch, and that is over the bar. That is a great score for a young man playing in his first Munster final. First touch of the ball, Adam English over the bar, steps out now to sit down again, gets the high five from Dermot Burns. But Kyle Hayes again, Marty has that influence on the game. He got the ball, broke a couple of tackles and got the ball away to Adam English. Long puck out from Aver Quilligan. Knocked down into the pack of Malone. David Fitzgerald wants it quickly. This is David Fitzgerald looking for options available. Decides to have a go himself and sends that over the bar for a second point. It reduces Limerick's lead again to three points. Seven minutes to go. Can Limerick hold on and do the five in a row? Or can Clare get back and equalise this match? Two major questions when you've six and a half minutes of normal playing time left. Ball comes down towards Seamus Flanagan. Sideline ball is going to Clare. David McInerney, go to take this. Son of Jim, of course, who won a medal back in 1995. Part of the 2013 team that won the All-Ireland as well. Little flick back, David Fitzgerald. It's two against two. Aaron Shanahan, what can he do? He can turn, shoot and score. It's a great response by Clare. They're still in the match. They still have a chance. They certainly have, Marty, and they're... They don't have Declan Hannon sitting now there on the Limerick anymore to try to cut off the ball there. There's to Adam English, he's going to see the action full time now. He's come up with Shane Flanagan. Ian Galvin is coming on for Clare. Seamus Flanagan has gone off for Limerick. Shane Meehan is on as well, of course. We have five and a minute, minutes and a bit to go. Two points between the teams. Ball breaks free. Getting it down for us, Tony Kelly. Kelly makes space. Sends it in low towards Shane O'Donnell. Shane O'Donnell taking on Barry Nash. Looks for the reinforcements. It arrives in Tony Kelly, who gave him the ball the first time. Ball is sent in. Ball is gone to the right and wide. But the referee had his arm up for a jersey pull. No advantage accruing. And he's given a free to Clare. Yeah, interesting to See it again, didn't spot it, but it must have been on Shane O'Donnell or something there when the ball came in. We'll see it here again. There's the left arm on Shane O'Donnell's shoulder. Did it grip the jersey is the question. And Nash. Not in that replay. No, it certainly didn't. And listen to the crowd. Getting behind our team. Claire, Claire, Claire is the message as Tony Kelly lifts, strikes and scores. It's his fifth point of the game. By his standards, he's had a quiet afternoon. He has, but if he can come to life here in the last four or five minutes, he'll be on the ball a couple of times there. Things start to happen for, for Clare, obviously, when their talisman is on it. Despite Limerick's brilliant second-half performance, they find themselves only one point in front. Ball is dropping in. Ball is dropping wide. There's still time for Clare to get an equaliser. The 
attention. And you know too, Mark, when you're down the pitch, you start to see the high vis jackets moving around the outside. You know, then there's five minutes left, and just adds to the tension of this affair. Adam Hogan dropping it down, nicely picked up, trying to make an angle for himself. Here comes the shot, dropping it in to Tony Kelly, didn't quite get behind it. Ian Galvin says, hard luck. Meanwhile, it's Limerick that worked the ball out with Colin Cochran down the middle, attacking the ball again. Good work on this occasion by Ryan Taylor. Knew he was going to be hooked by David Reedy. Gets a little bit of space. Ryan Taylor, is this equaliser? No, it's not. The oohs and the sighs are from fair people. Uh, roll of the eyes there from Ryan Taylor. He looked like he did absolutely everything right. Take your time. Then get the shot away, but just pull it left to the post. Paul Flanagan is on for Clare. Rory Hayes is the player that's making way, giving a clenched fist salute to say we can do it. But can they? Can Clare? In two and a half minutes, pull back Limerick. There's only one point between them. They've already been leveled four times in this game. Ball breaking down. William O'Donoghue got his hands to it. John Conlon comes in. Gives a powerful ball up towards Ian Galvin and company. Breaking ball favours Limerick. Barry Nash. Nicky Quaid calls for it. Backfires the keeper. Looking around at angles. Goes for a distance. Rawai's call. Puts the pressure on the clear defence. Up goes Garone Hegarty. Knocked away on this occasion. Adam English coming through. Trying to make an angle for himself. Half blocked. Ball into the space. And the ball is rolling out over the sideline. Linesman is going to indicate that it is a clear ball. Not too sure. I thought there was a, a, a break, a, a, a knockdown right. there. But anyway, linesman had no doubt. 119, 120, 68 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. Remember, it's results on the day. Are we going to head to extra time? The lads with the bibs might be out, but there's still time. Ball breaks, nipping in, trying to scoop it up. Ball is available. Colin Malone almost had it. Comes to Shane O'Donnell, who continues to play his heart out. David Fitzgerald, is he the equaliser? Hits it powerfully, and he hits it wide again. That is the 12th wide of the match for Clare. It's two bad ones there now, Marky, it has to be said. Limerick are away quickly again. O'Neill's on his own this side of the pitch. Trying to attack the ball. Trying to get it away is Dermot Ryan. Ball loose and available. Trying to get in the shot. This one is sailing between the posts. And it's over the bar. It's Carl O'Neill. Is that the match winner? That gives Limerick a two-point breathing space. Four minutes, Marty. It seems the fourth official below us. Limerick turn them over again. The road Hengardy intercepts the tuck out from Aver Quilligan to David McInerney, but he wasn't able to put it between the posts. 69 minutes, 40 seconds. Ball comes all the way out to John Conlon. William O'Donnell who copped on very quickly. The ball was coming his way. Still Conlon trying to lay it off. Ian Galvin stepping away from the challenge. Despite the best efforts, there is being hooked. He puts that between the posts and over the bar. It is one point again between the teams. And we are hitting the 70th minute of this monster hurling final. The nerves are jangling. The hurling is exceptional. And the atmosphere is electric. As what a wonderful, wonderful score by David Reedy from along the sideline, straight from Nicky Quaid's puck out. Yeah, fatigue's a big factor down there for both both defences. Not able to pick up as quickly or as sharp as they were. These are the championship minutes of the same, Marty. Ian Galvin looked around to see where he can pass the ball to. Vince, he gets it out. David Fitzgerald is under pressure on the ground, no free given. Limerick have the possession back. Skipping away from the challenge is Dermot Burns. Chasing after him is Ryan Taylor. Tim Burns, Matt Faust is the referee, and Limerick lose the possession. Clare have it once more, flicking it out. Can they create an opportunity? Tony Kelly is available there. Just a little touch added or two. Gives a chance for Clare to score from a very difficult angle, but this time there is no doubt. White flag is raised. Ian Galvin is the man. Just one point between the teams, three minutes of injury time to go. Yeah, loads of time left, Marty. Marty. Again, you see Kelly going on inside, you just wonder, but anyway, point in it. It's been a monster final to talk about for a long time. Ball is fucked out by Nicky Quaid. 
Adam Inglis picks it up, gets a little bit of space, turns, shoots, but this time sends it wide. He's a very good hurler, this young lad. Yeah, serious there now, just some hard luck. And our sympathies to the English family, and did I know that there was a bereavement during the week, but Alan is playing here on behalf of his uncle, I've no doubt about that. As the ball comes back out first, Carl O'Neill. As the ball is sent in, this is going over the bar. Yeah, loose puck out from Quilligan. A little bit giddy on it, went long, turned over, obviously. To Olympic jersey to do that. A man in shot to punish it. 72 minutes, two minutes of injury time. Great catch. Terman has the ball, trying to get it out towards Tony Kelly. Hit it a little bit too hard. Loose ball available. Gemma Burns puts his head down, flicks it on first. Kyle Hayes, Kyle Hayes going to be hooked, trying to stop him. Two clear lads, one of them is David McEnany, seven on seven. Ryan Taylor is there in support, still Ryan Taylor, still David McInerney. Hand passing it down the middle towards Ian Galvin, laying it off. Is there anybody in around the house? It's two against two again. As once more, Dan Morrissey comes out to tackle the ball. Number Cabot giving it back for us, Nicky Quaid. 72 minutes and 50 seconds coming on the clock. Going for distance, Tom Conlon, one man up is Aaron Galan. But uh, Claire have it with Paul Flanagan. John Conlon wants it short. Conlon gets it. 73 minutes now, just a minute to go. Can they produce something out of this? Dermot Ryan trying to skip away from the shackles of Colin O'Neill, dropping this in, in around the house. Aaron Shannon goes up for it. Ball comes down to Shane O'Donnell. Nicked away on this occasion. Barry Nash. Claire is down on the ground. Barry Nash trying to slow matters down. 40 seconds left in the injury time. Ball is sent across field. Ryan Taylor has it, or should have it. He's and available. Limerick, Limerick are all back in their own defence now. Gave it back some forwards for the last 40 seconds. Brian Taylor dropping this in between the D. Three Limerick players, but it comes instead to Tony Kelly. Tony Kelly goes for the point and scores, and a white flag is raised. There is now just one point between the teams, and we're heading towards the 74th minute. And Kenneth is below with Kylie. The two of them are telling their players to push back down the pitch. Don't sit back, there's only a point in it. We need to win this puck out. We're on the 74th minute, six seconds to go. After this, it's all up to the referee. The referee not looking at his watch yet. Who gets the possession here? Breaking ball, favours William Adunno. Does a little shimmy to the left, about to take a shot. Ball comes in towards Ava Quilligan. Leaves it go out, ball is wide. Quickly taken, there's still time on the clock. John Conlon sends it down the middle for Shane O'Donnell. For the referee, no, he's no with back. that call, he wants the puck out to be taken properly. He does, it's not over. It's, it's not over. The yeah. crowds are on the field, but they're going to have to be put back. Limerick are celebrating a one point victory, but the referee has not blown his full time whistle. He wanted the puck out to be taken by Ava Quilligan. Now, will, will he just blow the full time whistle, or will he, in fact, get everybody off the field and play an extra minute? Brian Lohan is coming on and Please. protesting with the referee. But Liam Gordon is saying, I think, if I can read the body language, he wants the puck out to be taken properly. And I don't think he's going to blow it up on the puck out. Brian Lohan is heading up around to all these players there, explaining what's going on, keeping it wide. Yeah, he's going to let the puck out go, I'd say, based on Brian Lohan's reaction with his forwards. So hopefully everybody gets back off the pitch. And we can get going again. And Hearts will start racing once more, Marty. How much will Liam Gordon, the referee, allow? Possession for Clare here is crucial. But Limerick have it. Dermot Burns trying to step away. Stopped in his tracks. Tony Kelly, Shane O'Donnell. There's a scramble on the Limerick 45. Trying to get it up in the hurley. Doing good work as Aaron Shannon gives it back. Here's the right corner back. He's surely fouled. The referee says no free. And the referee blows the ball down whistle. And Clare are protesting that there should have been a free. Limerick yeah. are celebrating with John Kiley in his 11th final previously and won 11 cups, live and silverware has done it again. Yeah, Brian Nolan's going out to the referee there. They're off to wait, maybe until he gets him inside. He may have a case, all right. The referee would have taught both player players, Tony Kelly and the last to be fouled were trying to play for it, I'm not so sure, but either way, just hope the referee can get off the pitch here now. Liam Gordon is coming off. Brian Lohan was quickly in to protest. And there looked to be a foul at the very end. It looked like there could have been a free at the very end. But instead, the referee blew the full-time whistle. 
and John Kiley and Brian Lohan have no doubt commiserate and celebrate and congratulate each other. Now was this, this was the incident again. It was a scramble just on the 45 meter line. Is Aaron Gallagher, Aaron Shanahan got it back. See Tony Kelly there, you see, was crashed into by Casey straight in the chest. And then after that, then of course the clear attacker was bottled up. Claims from the banner obviously will be that the tackle was high around the shoulder, just over the shoulder area. Either way, the result is in the books now, Marty. It sure is, and Limerick have won the Munster Championship for the fifth year in a row. Amazing to equal what Cork did from 1982 to 1986. But these Limerick hurlers are outstanding, and nobody can begrudge them that little bit of history of five Munster titles in a row. They fought magnificently in the second half. They were 111 to 11 points down at the break. They dominated the second half, and yet Clare stuck in. And they were still within a shouting distance, within one point of the Munster and All-Ireland champions. Limerick, Munster champions, five in a row. Marty and Brendan, thank you very much for that and such scenes here. They had to have take two, the Limerick fans did, but they're going to make the most of them, no doubt about that. Shane, even more history for your county. Incredible, Joanne. Um, you know, people, for a long time in Limerick, you know, they, there was no success whatsoever. Uh, you know, to win five in a row Munsters is just, it's unbelievable. The job that John, Paul, and the management team have done to this special group of players is just second to none. And they won by a point today. I know we'll come to the talking point at the end for a finish. But to be able to win all these games at the end by one or two points, it takes something special, and they're a special, special group. OK, we'll get more on that from you. We'll get Anthony's reaction to Claire's feet as well. Joe Canning, man of the match today. This, there wasn't much of an argument about this, was there? No, Aaron, Aaron Galan for us, man of the match today. In fairness, Keen Nolan got in at the last minute couldn't do much with him so yeah fair play to Aaron he, he showed his he showed his work for Limerick today he certainly did not for the first time Aaron Galan is man of the match on Munster final day and he's with thanks, Damien thanks very much Joanne Owen Cleary from Air is here to present Aaron with the Air man of the match congratulations Aaron and thank you very much Owen Aaron how much do you enjoy a day like today um I don't know if we said we enjoyed it for a 70 minutes there we said to get the job done but I suppose we'll enjoy it now look we've done I have a massive achievement, five in a row, so we'll definitely enjoy it now. I'll pop in here beside you. Uh, just in terms of Conor Cleary missed out uh, today, and I suppose the big job for Keane Nolan to come on. On days like today, no matter who you're marking, when the ball comes to you and you know you're in the zone, do you just want it to keep coming to you? Yeah, look, I suppose on a day like that, my I'd easy job, like I'd like to Dara and Declan giving in perfect balls, so it doesn't really matter who you're marking, but I suppose just to touch on Conor Cleary there, he got an awful injury a couple of weeks ago, and hopefully he recovers well soon. Can you make any sense out of that game? Like, in terms of the first half, they looked to have a little bit of a march on you, but they maybe missed 2-1, and in the second half, you seemed to clog up all that space and kind of turn the screw on them. Sure, look, I don't know, it's hard to put into words. There's nothing between the two teams. You've seen that for the last couple of years. What was it for a finish? Maybe a point or two points. They could have very easily come out and tap yourself. So a super team, to be fair, and they definitely put it up to us today. A last question for you. For the first few years of your career, I was talking to you about the step-up you made from the B team under 16, and you're sick of me talking about that, but for the last two or three years, to, to reach the level that you have, and as a team, the level you have, how have you managed just to kind of keep it ticking over, keep those desire levels up day after day? It's a great help, like, going to train in there Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, and you're meeting the likes of Paul Knurk, and, like, the stuff that men can teach you is unbelievable, so you'd be foolish not to want to keep learning, so it's a credit to Paul as well, and he has that impact in the whole, on the 37 people on the panel, so fair play to him. OK, enjoy, the, enjoy yourself, enjoy the win, congrats, Aaron. Sound, Damien, thanks a million. Back to you, Joanne. What a performance Aaron Galan had from start. He tired possibly towards the end, but he had done so much damage at that stage. Another man, of course, you would have soldiered alongside Shane. When they badly needed him, when Limerick weren't particularly performing well in the first half, and then when they came roaring out in the second half, he was there. Yeah, listen, we said it at half time. He was just given an exhibition throughout the whole game from minute one. You know, in fairness to Shane Amori, when he did come on, he done quite well. The first ball he went in, he won it. But, I mean, he was the man early days. He was the man that, uh, that kept Limerick in the game. To be fair, the ball that was going in was unbelievable. I have to say that now as well. And he did reference that as well. But he's, he's downplaying it. It's what he did when the ball came in was, was just, you know, with all Joe, myself, anyone that played in the forwards, you dream of getting ball like that. But David Reedy was unbelievable in the second half 
great ball in. At this stage, Keane Nolan, he was on a yellow card. He couldn't take him down. He stuck it into the back of the net. Uh, it's, it's the diagonal ball that probably killed Clare throughout the whole game. He was a man on fire. I have to say that, Joanne, it's very easy for us to stand up here in a fancy box and talk with the game that we love. But Clare got it wrong today. Right, Keane Nolan, it's his first day out, throwing him into a Munster final and then leaving him there for 55 minutes. You know, Shane Amore, the, the chain should have been made earlier. And, uh, you know, he just, he had one of them days that we, we'd all only love to have but a Munster fairness, final. In yeah, fairness to you, Shane, you did argue that the ball in in the, in the first yeah, half yeah. was a bit wide. That was the best ball in, in terms of near the goals. And once he won it, then the goal is on. But I agree with you, like, I wouldn't mind starting Keane Nolan because he has played a good lot. But he should have been gone at that stage. No, but, look at the young lad, he's only there to do his best. He should have been gone, Joanne. The change was there. We had Shane Amore, we had Paul Flanagan. They both did really well when they came on. So that change should have been made. But in, in fairness to Keane Nolan, right? No matter if you had any cornerback in there, if you had Sean Finn in there, he couldn't handle Aaron Galan today. The ball going in is so good. There's only so much a cornerback can do. I know they can gamble. But Galan is so good in behind as well that if they change it up and hit it in long, he's under pressure. The problems happened out the field. I wouldn't necessarily blame Keane Old. The problems happened out the field that Limerick had the time to hit a great ball in. 100%, Joe. That, did, that didn't lose the match, Joanne, as we've seen. It's the misses Clare had last the match. Yeah, From the Clare's point of view, credit to Limerick. Great champions find a way, and they did. What, what do you think about that, Joe, saying the issues, Shane, were out the field for Clare? I couldn't, I couldn't agree more with him, but what I'm saying is, I, I, I'd agree with Dalo. Start, no problem, but I mean, make, make a decision, make, yeah, make a yeah, substitution yeah. earlier on. That's just a big thing. As I said, very easy to do it from here, but it was quite obvious today. From Kean Nolan's point of view, because this is going to be difficult for him, isn't it? I think he really looked relieved when he was finally taken off. May, may, maybe so. And it, it, it's an awful baptism of fire to fire a guy in and, and, and a guy of Aaron Galan's calibre. I think maybe they just put Adam Hogan in there first, but anyway, it is what it is. And he, he tough yoke. Keep it there to find the end of the day, day. The wide, the wide's near in the the fourth quarter. Cost clear. The wide beaters the the and the balls drop they short so and the balls chances. locked down. Yeah, yeah. So we lost the game. These men in green are used to making history, and they have done it here on their home patch. So Declan Hannan about to put his hands on the Mickey Mackey Cup once again. So back to Marty. Yes, indeed. Look at that for a sea of green and white. As once again, another chapter in the story of Limerick hurling continues on with this golden era. They're an exceptional group of hurlers. They were tested this afternoon and they responded magnificently with a great second half performance. And nothing or anyone can take that away from John Kiley, Tom Morrissey and the rest of the Limerick squad. It really is a special moment. As Aaron Galan deservedly gets man of the match in this monster hurling final. And John Kiley, remarkable managerial career, seven years in charge, and certainly finding it difficult to believe the moment. Joe Ryan, Chairman of the Munster Council, hangs over the Mick Mackey Trophy in the presence of the President of the GA, Barry McCarthy, to Declan Hannon. Limerick, Munster champions, five in a row. Well done, Limerick. And Corin Shaw Glacka, her son Fearon Limney. I'm not going to delay you too long today because I can feel the party atmosphere bubbling over already. So, just to John Kiley, the management team that he's put in place over the last number of years to give us everything we need to perform on the pitch today, to do five in a row in Munster. John, the entire management team, thank you very much. Our fantastic sponsors, JP and Nori McManus, the McManus family, for their continued support. Only for you wouldn't be here at all. I hope you're enjoying these days. <laughs> to the Limerick County Board, who do everything possible, again, to put us under the pitch in the best way we can. To Mike, Sean, Seamus, thank you very much, and the best of luck for your term. To all the players' families, wives, partners, girlfriends, partners, everything. The much you put up with is amazing. We thank you from the bottom of our heart. We can't wait to celebrate with you later on.
to today's match officials. No doubt a very tough game to, 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 to ref. The conditions, the tightness of the game. Just congratulations, you did a very, very good job. To Claire and your, your incredible supporters that came here in numbers today. Another titanic battle with you. We wish you the best of luck for the rest of the year. We might meet with you again. And finally, to the most fantastic supporters in all of Ireland. <laughs> to see you green and white is absolutely special to see. Us as players are not getting tired of these days. We hope you never get tired of them either. Lim You would imagine that Declan Hannan would be getting bored of all these trophies he's to, to lift, but no, he looks like he's enjoying every single second of it. Why not? Such an incredible record for John Kiley. 12 finals, 12 victories. That's, that's just unbelievable, Shane. Oh, it's incredible. I, you can only dream of days like this. I remember 2013, when we played Cork here in the Munster final. Hadn't won one in a long, long time. And the scenes here are nearly better, and that's after winning five in a row. Uh, you know, they, 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 what the management team have done, I keep going back to it. You know, they have the best management team in the country. You know, the best psychologist, the best manager, the best coach, the best selectors. They have a fantastic county board, a fantastic sponsor, all pulling in the one direction. That's the difference. Everybody's pulling in the one direction. As I said earlier, there's no difference. Uh, the fact that you're winning all these games at one point by two points, that makes a massive difference. And you're going anyway, wrong. Anyway, the here behind me are going wrong. He's fairly missed it, though. Dano, no. turn around there, turn around there. <laughs> I'm sure you can see that behind us. They're dancing just like Shane Dowling here is in the Gaelic Grounds. And why not after that? The year is only stopped. I'd say stop dancing, Shane. Stop uh, and, dancing. Anthony's reminding them there's still a way to go in this championship. Having said that, and for all of these celebrations that are going on here, and for all of what Shane just said about everybody pulling in one direction, will, will Claire feel very, very hard to done by by the fact that they did not get quite a straightforward free to level things at the very end. Yeah, I suppose it, it, we have to talk about it, right? It was at the very end. Claire tried to turn the ball over here, shin it on, but watch Tony Kelly straight in. Peter Casey, I think it was, got him. And here, even just after this, they win the ball back. Shanahan gives it to Hogan, goes through. William O'Donoghue takes him out high. We have to talk about it. They were two frees they probably should have got. Like, people say, the end of the game, one-point game, but, you know, that's life, I'm afraid. Dale will probably speak with, you know... It's better. chaos, it's chaos at the end, though. I mean, the quick puck out should have been allowed to be taken with the pitch invasion, John, clear the fields. Two frees there should have been given. I'm still not whinging about it because we we miss so much. We, you don't deserve to come out on top in a game like that. But still played heroically and have to learn from 